All right, welcome back to Long Island's number one pro wrestler broadcast, Monty and the Farrow, only seen here out of Indie Music TV, straight out of Ron Konkoma, where we've got some, we came out of Sunday, where we had uh, Mila Moore. I don't like you. You entrapped me. You and your trick and questions. Jack Victory. Yeah, he's our boy. Am I, look, guy was cool as all hell. Yeah, he was. Right? Yeah. But, the problem I'm having, and I'm just going to share it, is mm-hmm. some guys I just never had emotional involvement with. I knew who they were. But Are you supposed matter. to know every single effing wrestler that it's went not back? I know it, but like, we've got Ken on. I mean, today. I knew Jack, but we've you got know. Ken. You, yeah, you knew Jack. But it was but ECW Ken more. Yeah. Ken, Ken Patera. To me, well, yeah, one is, Ken I Patera love the guy. Is Ken and, and he's an icon. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I, I just don't want to be an asshole. You know what I mean? Well, you know, some things can't be helped. They just can't be they helped. They can't be helped. At the board is Abe. Abe filling in for Spidey. Yes, he is. Honest Abe, what's going on? Hey, how you doing, guys? So it's good. good to see you. Good. did a fantastic good. job on Sunday. Yeah, he did. And he, he hung did. in there. Yeah. Did he's, a great he's job. He's very active back there. There's lots of exciting camera angles. He does have a lot of good he stuff. He does not going mess on. around. He keeps it moving. Go ahead. All right, dude. So some mm. get some serious stuff. Uh, oh. Tina Turner, the queen of rock and roll. Tina Turner dies at 83. Tina Turner, the American-born singer who left a hard scrabble farming community 
an abusive relationship to become one of the top recording artists of all time, died Wednesday at age 83. She died peacefully, peacefully after a long illness at her home near Zurich, Switzerland, her representative said. Turner began a career in the 1950s during the early years of rock and roll and it evolved into MTV phenomenon. Tina Turner, my friend. Yeah. Tina Turner. Wait, can I just... Two men enter, one man leaves. That's what you remember. Thunderdome. That's what you remember from Tina Turner. Tina Turner. Wow. Mad Max 3 Beyond Thunderdome. I did not get to ask you the question I wanted to ask you, but now you just answered it without me asking What's love got to do with it? Here was a, it's a secondhand look, emotion. Jimmy, when I think about you, right? Yeah, try not And to. I know what a great artist you are and what a great musician you are. Gee, thanks. But I uh, always think you'd up. be... No, no, no. Okay. This is not oh, set up. Wow. This is, this okay. is my thought process. Oh, then go ahead. Sure. I think about how I, sometimes I feel like you're pigeonholed. Like, <laughs> hold on. I got to explain this. No, I'm from a hard-scrabbled forming colony. What the fuck is a hard-scrabbled forming because it's community? Like, what is hard-scrabbled? What does that mean? It's, uh, it's hard-working. Hard scrabbled? scrabbled is a word for working. Wow. Well, no wonder I'm not so used to it. you're not a scrabbler. I'm not working. <laughs> <laughs> but my point is, like, I know you know all forms of music. Yeah. But I've never sure. known you to ent- like enjoy them. Like, enjoy- what do you mean? We've gone to Ooh, the beach together, and good. you've listened to the music I listen to. I like Sometimes the music I listen to eighty. But we liked that. We had a good time. All that stuff. It wasn't like that 70s. airplane that played that my horrible music. Is, did you? Were you a listener of Tina Turner? No. I was a huge Tina Turner. Fan. Okay. Congratulations. Why were you not a listener? Of Tina I Turner? am very interesting. I. When it comes to pop music... Or is it a woman thing? Hells no. Stevie okay. Nicks is like right. a, a, a Stevie Nicks. Okay. Grace Slick from Jefferson Airplane. Got Janis it. Joplin. Got are it. you kidding me? Right. They are right there with Robert Plant from Led Zeppelin. What are you talking about? Well, maybe not Robert Plant. Back to, back to, t- back to anyway, Tina Turner. Um, yeah. Uh, no, I just, I'm not a huge fan of some pop music. But- and MTV had a real bad habit of taking a song... And playing it to the point that you'd throw yourself through a window. Like Run to the Hills? They never played that. You had to watch that Midnight Metal madness, that Saturday Night Midnight special, okay? Don't rewrite history. I had to fucking I listen to it. If I wanted heavy that. metal, I had to listen to Fingers Metal Shop at uh, fucking midnight. I'm not so sure about okay? that. Okay? They weren't being played as much as What's Love Got to Do well, With what It. What's Love Got to Do is a better song. Yeah, well, who sold more albums in the end? Ha. F and uh, Tina Turner. Not than Iron Maiden. You better go back and check your numbers. That song. <laughs> anyway, still let's better go back and this. check your numbers, I don't pal. Want, I don't want to put down. Check your numbers. Forty years of so legends. You just felt they up o- the irons. Felt they okay. overplayed it like Bab yeah. did to uh, Phil Zeppelin. Collins. Zeppelin? And, 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 oh, Zeppelin got this. Oh, so overplayed. If I at least hear, you agree on that. Of course, if I hear every time. Oh, here comes Skinner. Every time. These bands are legendary. You gotta keep playing the same three songs. Phil Collins in the 80s on WBAB was a nightmare. Susu Studio, which makes me wanna commit susu suicide. What? Just say the word. Susu Studio. That song is annoying as shit. They used to play it every 10 seconds. Anarchy. Oh my God, play Crazy Train or something. Why do I have to hear the studio again? I'm not into pop music, dude. Well, rest in peace, Tina Turner. Uh. One thing I'll always remember about Tina Turner is my mother who passed away. Okay. Loved That's... Well, Tina you Turner. Just said that and right she used to beginning. say to me, well, that wasn't the reason I loved Tina okay. Turner, but You're right. she used to say to me, Michael, do my legs look like Tina Turner? Oh, man. Hey, do mine? No. Damn it. I got to hit the gym. Tina Turner. Tina Turner was an icon in music. Yeah, she was. Um, I never would deny I that. I mean, all right, so I'll share with you yeah, great two voice. things before we get to our guest mm. after commercial break. Yeah. There's two women, Uh-oh. and you named Stevie Nicks. Stevie okay? Nicks, man. But there's two women that meant Ooh. the world to me in music. Okay. And uh, I don't know if people will agree with me, but what? one was Tina Turner. Okay. And the other was Donna Summer. Donna Summer was great. Donna Summer, Donna was great, Summer man. I thought was you No, know, Gene Simmons was dating her at one point. Was he really? Yeah, that guy dated she's everybody she's in the seventies. She's beautiful. Woman. Yeah, Donna Summers was great, man. Here's something that happened to me today. Okay. So I you know, I, I got up I got up to work a little late. 
And yeah. for me, late is like six in the morning. And that it is seemed like the you. world was moving, right? You're usually kicking and a bird's I get nest. into Dunkin' Donuts, and the drive through has 80 cars in it already. And I'm like, what the <laughs> F? So I'm like, all right, I'll go inside because I need coffee, right? Mm. This lady gets in front of me. Uh-oh. And she's literally tasting what? every donut, every type of coffee. It was like a bad... What do you mean... Wait episode a of a comedy series. You mean series. tasting every what is like Belushi can I, can in the cafeteria I, I try, or an Animal House? Can I try the Putting flavor? It back? No, she was asking for samples. Oh my god! Can I try her. the flavor of this? Oh, I would. Can I try the flavor? Oh, can you pour me a little cup of your oh, hazelnut? My, and how many people are behind her? Just me. Oh, oh, you were the very last one. You're the lucky one at the back of the line. I know. It was oh, the drive through was insane, and then me. And inside was doable. Okay, but it's or six so in the you thought. It's six in the morning. Right. Like, let me get through. Okay. And this, and then I look at a car. And a license plate says Goofy. Right? What'd you expect? She was trying to tip you off. Dude, I don't think I ever wanted to <laughs> grab someone and rip their face <laughs> off as much as I did Goofy. It would have changed the license plate to Limpy. You ain't kidding. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever go through that where people just don't even give yes, a shit they don't about care anything what that's so going on behind them? Ever. Whatsoever. Yeah, I've had that. I usually start to breathe really loudly. You're closing your eyes. You get angry. I'm, I, it gets me mad. I hate people like where's that. The, where's the Those simple human respect? I'm the only one in the universe. I, I will lose my shit when I see that. Yeah. We would like to thank the band that sings a theme song for Monty and Farrow. Hmm. Jimmy Farrow, mm -hmm. the star of the show, along with his partner, Bart Griggs. Bart, man. Make up the band with Stereo That's Hall. Him. Such great songs as In My Dream, This Life, Not Far Behind, Here Comes the Rain. You can find their music on the Wisteria Hall YouTube page. Hit that like and subscribe. And if you're in the middle of doing that, go to Long Island's number one pro wrestler broadcast, Monty and Farrow, and hit yeah. that like and subscribe on our YouTube page. Yeah. Go download uh, Wisteria Hall's music on Spotify, Apple Music, or Reverb Nation. If you didn't know it, you are watching Long Island's number one pro wrestler broadcast, Monty and Farrow. Catch us on the Monty and Farrow YouTube page, the Monty and Farrow Facebook Live page. Hear us on iHeartRadio, Spotify, Anchor. Catch us on the Monty DeFaro Twitch TV page. Mm -hmm. Catch us on Channel 115 in New York every Tuesday at 9 p.m. and every Saturday at 11.30 a.m. And Channel 20 on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. where over 150,000 people watch us weekly where you will see this icon, this Hall of Famer, this all-time great Ken Patera in our reduced version of this show. It's abbreviated, but you're, you're right. in the ballpark. Well, we take the bullet points of this interview, yeah. you know, and... Uh, remove all the shit that we, we get us suspended. And here's a... Uh, I mean... Yes. Yeah. You got to get past the suspension. Ah. Stuff, right? Oh, we got to talk to Ken about that, that he got us suspended. Did, did he get us suspended? Did he? I don't think yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Did? Oh, he might have. He did. It was, now, it was politics, his first in, Yeah, his first interview. So what? His first interview is on the member portion, because I can't put it public. Well, that'll learn them. Well, that, that'll learn us. Yeah. Go to the Intuitive Network. Spelled I N two I T I V E Network, where you can download this app for free. It's a Netflix alternative. It's a Hulu new alternative. It's free. It's got movies, documentaries, uh, TV shows. It's really great. Yeah. And most importantly, they've got Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast on there, right? So, flagship, baby. guys, please go. It's free. Download the app. It, it costs you nothing. And if you're sitting at home, you got nothing to do, you put it on your TV and you watch a movie that you may not see anywhere else, it's right? free. There's a lot a of gold word. out there that people don't. In fact, I'm going to ask Mr. Patera to download it. Okay. What do you think? Do you think he'll do it? How do I get this thing to work? I can hear him now. We'll be back with this icon, <laughs> Mr. Ken Patera. The real Intercontinental Champion. See you in a sec. Hey folks, this is Wolfie D here. And if you are looking to buy or sell a home in Tennessee or Southern Kentucky, you're going to want to call my buddy, the rock star realtor, Benji Bowie. And you say, Wolfie, how do I get in touch with this rock star? Well, you can call him directly at 615-390-8216. You can go to his website, BowieHomes.com. That's B-U-I-E Homes.com. Or you can email him at BenBowie34 at gmail.com. 
B-E-N-B-U-I-E 34 at gmail.com. When you need a home, you need the Rockstar Realtor. Tell him Wolfie sent you. Benji is a member of Exit Realty's Garden Gate team in Gallatin, Tennessee. You need a body shop? You need engine repair? Auto Excellence. Collision Specialist. 631 261 6420. That's 631 261 6420. Auto Excellence. All right, welcome back to Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast, Monty DeFaro, where we have the iconic, the man. Ken Patera. Ken, how are you, sir? Good. Thank you guys for uh, having me on tonight. I, you know, I didn't know what I was going to do on a Thursday night. And here we are. Here we yeah. are. And you know what? Who better to spend it? It's great spending it with Often you. Often imitated Ken. but never duplicated. <laughs> well, speaking of that, Mr. Patera, uh, last week we lost the iconic superstar Billy Graham. Um can you share your thoughts on Billy and maybe your relationship with him, sir? Yeah, well, I, I met, uh, I knew who Billy was uh, way before I got into pro wrestling. He was, uh, he grew up in Paradise Valley, uh, Arizona, and uh, which was right next to Phoenix. And he used to train at a gym down there called Thorbeck's. And, uh, uh, you know, all, all the muscle heads in town trained there. And I knew uh, three or four of them because they were at Arizona State. Uh, shot putters, discus throwers, guys that I had competed against. And uh, they uh, they told me about Thorbex. They told me about superstar Billy Graham. And uh, uh, so that's, so I, I've known Billy for a long time. Uh, then I met him uh, right after I started wrestling for Vern Gagne in uh, the AWA in uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota. I, I live 100 miles north of Minneapolis right now. But uh, I met Billy, and uh, he came in there and uh, came into the AWA, got over like a million dollars, which he did everywhere. Uh, kind of like myself. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, yeah. Bill, Billy was a good guy. I always liked him. You know, he, he was a flamboyant uh, character in the wrestling ring, but outside of the ring, he was a normal person, you know, just like the rest of us. But uh, he was quite a showman. I, I, I really enjoyed uh, his uh, colorful... Uh, uh, way of doing things. And uh, so about six months after he was here in the AWA, you know, I was a rookie, uh, along with Ric Flair and jumping Jimmy Brunzel, Greg Gagne, uh, the Iron Sheik, Cosro Viseri. Uh, we all went through the same training camp with Vern Gagne. But uh, uh, Vern Gagne, he was the heavyweight champion of the AWA. Plus, he was a promoter. I mean, my God, how, how good, uh, you can't get any better than that. So he came to me one day and uh, asked me, he said, Ken, how would you like to do a, a weightlifting contest against superstar Billy Graham? I said, yeah, I'd love to. And he, do you think he can beat him? <laughs> I started laughing. So what, what's so funny? I said, he's a bodybuilder. I said, you know, I, I'm a weightlifter. I was in the Olympic Games. I was the first American to ever lift 500 pounds over my head in both the military press and the clean and jerk. I said, yeah, but I saw Billy do a... a bicep curl 250 pounds at the gym. I says, yeah, that, that's not bad for a bodybuilder. <laughs> <laughs> so he thought I was putting uh, Billy down, and I wasn't. I said, well, I'll ask Billy. 
Ask Billy if I can beat him in a weightlifting uh, uh, contest. And he said, well, yeah, I will. So he asked Billy, I don't know, a day or two later, and Billy started laughing. He says, you think I can beat Ken Patera in a weightlifting contest? Are you nuts? Mm. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, we got together and we did a weightlifting contest in the middle of the ring in all the big arenas uh, and even some um, medium-sized arenas in the AWA. Then we did the arm wrestling thing in all the big arenas. Hell, we must have had 20, 20 to 30 sellouts all the way from Green Bay, Wisconsin to uh, Denver, Colorado, uh, and uh, Phoenix, and uh, San Francisco, Winnipeg, Canada, uh, all over the place. Yeah. So that was a hell of a uh, 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 program that we had there. Yeah. Ken, how do you feel you would have done? The 1980 or so Ken Patera with Wizard, compared to Billy Graham's reign as a uh, as a flashy villain, if they had given you the belt, which by the way I think they should have in those days, 1980 yeah. or so with the Wizard, how do you think you would have fared and compared to Graham's run if they had given you the belt as a villain back in like 1980 or so? How do you think you would have done? Well, I'd sell out all the buildings in the territory. I believe you would have. I, I, I wrestled uh, Bruno uh, over 30 times uh, between Madison Square Garden, Boston Garden, Igloo over in uh, Pittsburgh, uh, uh, down in Philadelphia at the Spectrum. And uh, we sold them all out. Yeah, Baltimore, Washington, D.C., sold them all out. And uh, so uh, nothing would, would have been different. Hell, when I had the Intercontinental belt uh, back in 81, I beat Pat Patterson in Madison Square Garden for that. And we went around the horn, sold out everywhere. Yep. I went around the horn with Bobby Backlund twice, sold out everywhere. So, I mean, you know, I was selling out without the belt. Uh, and uh, Billy was doing good. He, uh, and, uh, how long did they leave that belt on, Billy? Less than a year. About a, 10 months. Le- about Yeah, about 8 to 10 months. I think it was 8 months. But, uh, yeah. you know, it doesn't. Let about me ask you months. this, that you brought that up, Ken. A lot of people always felt that, and I think Billy did too, that he was so over they should have changed the plan and turned him face instead of giving the belt to Backlund uh since that's what Vince yeah. McMahon made his promise to. Do you think a face Billy Graham would have been more successful Ooh. than a Bob Backlund? Oh, yeah, he would have been as big as Bruno. I'm going to tell you guys a story. They were contemplating doing that, so they had me wrestle Billy up in Portland, Maine, of all places. We sold the place out, turned away about 2,000 people in Portland, Maine. And they wanted a, uh, a promotion. They wanted to find out who who was over as a heel because we were both heels. Well, shit, two minutes into the match, I was a heel. <laughs> Superstar Billy Graham was a cold stone baby face. And... Uh, so it was, uh, you know, so they, you know, uh, old man, he thought that was interesting. I want to say, when was that? Uh, that had to be in the 70s, 78, 79, something like that. Uh, Billy didn't have, I don't think Billy had the belt anymore. I think Backlund had the belt. Right. Uh, you are correct. Do you remember when uh, Backlund beat Billy for the belt? February 20th, 1978. I do okay, believe. That's, it was right after that then. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah, because they were trying to figure out if they had made a mistake or not. Mm-hmm. Uh, so so, so Senior was second-guessing second really himself, Kenny? Huh? 
Was Senior second guessing himself? I think so. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, because then he was thinking about putting the belt on me uh, uh, prior to Billy. Uh, Bruno Sammartino went to the old man and says, I want to drop the belt and I want to drop it to Ken Patera. Ooh. Well, then the old man, here's an interesting uh, bit of history. The old man tells Bruno, well, I've already uh, promised a superstar, Billy Graham. He's down working for Eddie Graham in Florida. And uh, he couldn't do any more with Billy. So he, he thought that uh, if Billy came up to New York, uh, they could uh, put the belt on him. And so Bruno was still stuck on Ken Patera. He wanted to put the belt on me. And, uh, you know, at that time, it didn't matter one way or another to me. I was so over, I was selling out everywhere without the belt. And I was making the same money as uh, those guys, you know. And uh, so in, uh, one thing leads to another, you know, there's all the bullshit. So Billy got the belt, and then he drops it to Backlund. And the reason they dropped it to Backlund, the old man felt that he couldn't trust Billy with the belt. Mm. Be because several years prior to that, Ivan Koloff had held him up for money. A superstar held him up for money, too, uh, prior to having the belt. And now when Billy got the belt, I don't know if he held him up for money or uh, what transpired there, but that was, but he had already promised Bobby Backlund that he was going to put the belt on him after Superstar had his run. So where in the fuck does that leave Ken Patera? You know, I said, you know, and so the old man came to me and he explained to me, he says, Ken, you are so over, you don't need a belt to sell out. These other guys, you know, they, they need a little help. And I said, well, and I knew what the gates were, you know, everybody knew what the gates were. So it wasn't any bullshit like that. So that that's how it went down. And then I left. Uh, uh, when the hell did I leave? I left in 78, end of 78, something like that. I just got fed up with all the fucking games. Mm. And I went back to uh, Mid-Atlantic Territory, Charlotte. And my family, you know, I just bought a big house down there a couple, couple years prior to that. And so I wanted to go back there and uh, wrestle and uh, be with my family. So that's how I wound up leaving there. And then, uh, so I was there for about a year and a half and then come uh, uh, New Year's Day, 1980, uh, I went back to the WWF. And uh, was that 1980 or 1981? It's 80. It's, it sounds about right to me. And then they put you with Wizard, and then you won the Intercontinental Belt. It all sounds about right. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what? Uh, yeah, what does a couple years mean? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, er everything worked out good. Uh, so... Uh, you had a great run as uh, Intercontinental Champion. That was some great days. That really was. You were great. Could, could you speak a little louder? I am I'm my... just saying you had such a great run as yeah. the Intercontinental Champion. That was some great days. It really was. Yeah, I did have I, I had a hell of a run. You know, I was the only wrestler in history to ever hold that Intercontinental belt and the Missouri State belt at the same time. Yep. Two very prestigious belts. And uh, I love St. Louis, and they, they put that Missouri State Championship belt on me twice, mm. uh, two different times. And uh, so anyway, uh, that was a good, a good uh, time in my uh, career.
I was making top dollar and uh, enjoying myself. Had the pick of the arena rats and uh, everything else. So there, everything fell into place. Did you ever did you ever fall in love with any of the arena rats? You're not supposed to. They're rats. Ken, no, straighten them out. they're rats. Straighten them out, Ken. <laughs> they're rats. Exactly. They're rats. Exactly. Hey, Ken, yeah, we I, lost... I, uh... I wound up my last wife was my third wife. And uh, she wasn't a arena rat, though. But I, I met her while I was wrestling. Okay. And uh, uh, I wound up marrying her. Had two beautiful daughters. And then she decided to fly the coop. And uh, fuck a miserable bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you get for staying with a ring rat i mean no i'm just kidding yeah or, uh, boy. Can I, I wish she had been a ring rat then i, I would have never <laughs> married her <laughs> yeah some of those girls had as many dicks stick in them Ooh. as a porcupine has quills sticking out of them Uh oh, Hello. man that's a prickly situation Kenny, um, yes, it was. We <laughs> lost also women's wrestler Peggy Lee. Um, did you know Peggy Lee at all? I was she a Southern gal? Yeah, she was. She once held the NWA World's Women's Championship. So I, I, I figured maybe you might have run across her at some point. No. She was only sixty-four, Mike. Yeah. No, I'm trying to. Re I'm trying to remember her. I don't know. What time period are we even talking here? She's 64. So we're making 30 years ago, it's maybe? It's like the 80s, right? Oh, okay. All right, well. Yeah, no. Anyway, we wanted to, you know, just recognize that we passed her. So, Ken, one thing I uh, want to talk about, you have a new book that's out. Um, Ken Patera, The Weight of the World. Can you tell us a little bit about your book? Look at that cover. The Weight of the World. Look at that cover. Nearly nearly 500 pages of uh, uh, just the knowledge that people will derive from reading this book is phenomenal. They'll be a brainier, they'll have a better life, and uh, they'll even make more money if they buy and read this book. Their grammar will be improved. Well, let me let me Very ask nice. you this: Farrow only likes books with lots of pictures. Is there a lot of pictures in there? For and, him? and crayon? Yes, there is. <laughs> there is. Uh, well, I wrote four or five chapters in crayon. Awesome. <laughs> That's good. The, That's awesome. Holy Crayola! Yeah, and the, those good. those are the chapters that have the most pictures in them. So it's a bit I of an activity book too. Can I like finger paint? Uh, so. Ken, where can the fans get your book? Well, they can order from me, KenPatera.com. Very nice. And uh, uh, my daughter does all the mailing. My daughter has two other businesses. So she just puts everything together, ships everything out, and they'll get it in a timely manner. And uh, all they have to do is go to KenPatera.com and uh order it i'll i'll autograph it wow for wow. them personally autograph it that's great uh, because i do it in my daughter's uh workshop here at the house and uh if if they want to get an autograph somewhere they'll have to go to a, a convention or mm. something you know yeah and uh, uh and to, to see if i'm there uh, I, I did a convention in uh, St. Louis uh, two weeks ago, and boy, we had a hell of a turnout there. I think we had a couple thousand people, and uh, they brought in a lot of the guys that had been inducted into the St. Louis Hall of Fame over the years. Uh, they inducted me into the St. Louis Hall of Fame about eight years ago. They flew me down and uh, had a nice time. And then uh, this past, uh, about a week ago, uh, they flew me down again. And God, they had everybody down there. They had uh, uh, the Barbarian down there. They had uh, Jerry Briscoe. 
uh, JBL, uh, or Ted DiBiase, Bobby Orton, uh, and well, I can't. There was about 30 guys. There was a ton of guys. And uh, the fans really enjoyed themselves. I sold a ton of books down there, too. They had uh, tables all set up for everybody to sell their pictures. And if, if they, those of us that had books, we could sell those. I, I, I'd lost track of how many books I saw. I sold, I took down a big box of them. I sold them all. <laughs> well, I'm going to sell you, tell you what, no, you're going to sell I, one I, more I because that, that. once I get out of this interview, I'm ordering one. Do what? Once I get out of this interview, I'm ordering one, so you're going to sell one more. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, Farrell, are you going to buy one? Can a I get a signed brick? box of crayons? Well, what color crayon do you want me to sign it in? Periwinkle blue. I, I'll, you know, Ken, I, uh, when I pay for it, I'll, I'll ask for Pharaohs to be signed in periwinkle is, blue this crayon. Is, this is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you. Ugh. Ken, one important thing I, I think it. that's really important, um, cause we're older and, uh, you know, you're, you're also an, an American icon. You're an Olympic weightlifter, yes. right? That's, you yes. know, to me. Yeah. That's as important as being in the military, right? Because you're representing this wonderful country, uh, and you're 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 trying to win us medals and show that we're the greatest country on this planet. So we give you such tremendous kudos beyond your wrestling career to talk about what a great Olympic star you were. But one thing mm -hmm. that seems to be forgotten: um, you were in the 1972 Munich Olympics where the younger yeah. generation doesn't realize uh, mm. where the Israelis uh, Olympic athletes were kidnapped and eventually murdered. Um, how yeah. did that affect you personally as an Olympic hero like yourself? Well, I don't wear my feelings on my sleeve. I was over there to do a job uh, and uh, I, you know, I felt bad for those guys. People say, did you see any of it? I said, yes, right from my uh, balcony, my, uh, uh, let's say, hotel room it, it, in the Olympic Village. I could look out of my window across the courtyard. Courtyard was probably two, 200 feet across. And the compound for the Jews were right there. And I could look right, I saw the whole thing live and in person. Mm. And uh, uh, so I, I knew exactly what was going on. And uh, it was on TV at the same time. And I'll tell you a funny story. Jimmy Brunzel calls me, says, Kenny, have you seen the movie Munich yet? I said, no, why? He said, well, it's about the terrorists uh, killing all the Jews in the Olympic Village. I said, Jimmy, I was there. I saw it live and in person. Why would I want to go see some stupid movie about it? And he says, well, I guess you're right. I said, yeah, I'm right. And uh, so, yeah, he, to this day, he, Swords, that was one of the best movies they ever saw. Mm -hmm. I said, Jimmy, put it in perspective. It was a documentary. It wasn't a movie. Right. It was a right. documentary. Well, you're right. But, boy, that was fascinating. I didn't realize what you went through uh, when you were over there in the Olympics. I said, yeah, that was part of the deal. Were we other subscribe to it. Ken, I'm sorry. Were other athletes uh, worried for their safety, or did they realize this is more of a targeting of a certain background, or were you were you worried about your own safety by any chance, or no? No. Okay, just checking. No, because else I had I had total trust in the German police. Okay. And uh, they had shut the whole whole place down. Now here we had like between five and six thousand athletes in the Olympic Village, if you can, you know, grasp that. Mm. I mean, every 
50 feet, there was a German uh, police officer or a German military. Uh, and they all had automatic weapons, brother. I mean, they were loaded to the gills. So I no, I didn't, I didn't have any uh, fear of uh, terrorists uh, getting to any of the athletes, including myself. And so, uh, yeah, they were all nutcases, those uh, Arabs uh, at the time. Uh, well, that was their ideology. Kill the Jews. Kill right. all the Jews. Fuck right. them. Yeah. You know, that was their attitude back then. Uh, yep. Yasser Arafat, that little fucking midget uh, camel jockey, he was uh, uh, ahead of the Palestinian the PLA, Palestinian Liberation. Correct. Army. Yep. That that's what they called themselves. Yeah. Yeah. So, so so on a lighter note, Ken, um Pharaoh does a great imitation of you. Oh, so stop I'm gonna, it. I'm gonna what let him do an imitation of you and I want you to grade it and tell me what oh, you would think on. if Pharaoh is doing this a is, good job. You know what, Ken? He's just made, setting me up to look like a wiener. Would you stop it? The problem is, is that the last time you were on, Ken, and I always bring this up when we're not on the air. So now the pressure's on, and I'm going to have to do a good... I'm not going to be able to, because it's organic, this imitation, you pain in the ass. Anyway, <laughs> when you were on last time, he point blank said to you, do you think Vern Gagne could have kicked your ass? Okay? And you're like, well, uh, are you serious? You want me to come over there? And I was just like, I always bring it up to him. I'll walk up to him and go, are you serious? <laughs> so there it is. There's my imitation. D please don't grade it. Oy, good Lord. What do you think? Do I pass or do I fail? Go ahead, grade it. Ugh. Was that a good imitation? It's Ken? a silly imitation, but it's in the best form of flattery well, is imitation. Bad. It was bad. Bad. You got the words right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, Ken. Thanks a lot. Well, then again, but before, I, I have to ask you, can Vern Gagne kick your ass? Stop it! <laughs> oh, my God. Well, you know, he's going to come through want... the set. Go ahead, Ken. I thought Mike and I were friends, but I think I'm going to have to fuck him up next time. No, no. <laughs> you are yes! my friend. There we go. You are my friend. Uh, I know you can kick Vern Gagne and Greg Gagne's oh, look ass. look at you. <laughs> I love you, Ken. Little relish on your hot dog there, Ken? <laughs> oh, my God. Talk about buttering up. Yeah, yeah Greg Gagne was in St. Louis uh, last week when I was down there. Playing tennis? He's skinnier than heck. I, I don't think he weighs 170 pounds. I don't think he did back then. You know, Ken, let me ask you. Can <laughs> Craig Gagne get nasty? He seems like he could get, become a real nasty guy. He does. He does. Is he a badass secretly? Uh, Not compared to you. Well, no. He Craig's a good guy. Okay. You know, I traveled all over Europe uh, with Greg after the Olympic Games. We went on a two-week uh, hiatus through uh, Austria and uh czechoslovakia and stuff we, we we had a nice time you know we got a couple dollies over there in vienna and uh you know traded them back and forth and so yeah yeah greg, greg is a good guy you know i never had any problem with greg i remember the last yeah. time you were in the studio the uh well the only time i think he was in the studio he was in the mm -hmm. studio one time you know, I, I still think about this. And yes, I'm going to do this in your voice. China ruined the Intercontinental title. Is this true? Do you still really feel this way about this? That when you saw China with the Intercontinental title, you were like, fuck this title? Yeah. Yeah, that was uh, the beginning and the end for, uh, for the WWF as far as I was concerned. Yeah, she could probably legitimately beat everybody in the WWF at that time. Probably. <laughs> and uh, so uh, maybe that's why McMahon put the belt on her. I don't mm. know. No, it was, a, it was a farce. It was a, a joke, you know. Uh, see, he, he was woke before you had to be woke. And uh, <laughs> Vince, Vince of all yeah, people, uh, was woke before. <laughs> wow, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah. 
So, Ken, uh, Ric Flair came out with a documentary on Peacock. It was called Being Ric Flair. Uh, wonderful documentary. But he tells a story on how he actually becomes a professional wrestler is because of the great Ken Patera. Can you wow. tell that story from your end? Well, yeah. I uh, When I moved back to uh, Minnesota from Portman, Oregon, I walked in this bar called George's in the Park. And there was a kid uh, uh, sitting at a table just inside the door. It turned out to be the bouncer. Or the Back in those days, this was a pretty classy place. We called them doormen. You know, we didn't call them bouncers. And uh, so I asked the doorman, I said, uh, where's your cigarette machine? He said, right over there. So I went over, put uh, 50 cents in the machine, pulled the plunger, out pops my Salem lights. What? Ah, Salem lights. As I, as I stood up, there's the, the doorman was standing right next to me. And I looked at him, I said, yeah. He says, are you Ken Patera? I said, yeah. He said, I knew it. I saw you on the Wild World of Sports a couple of weeks ago. And I said, oh, yeah, uh, the World Championships in weightlifting. He said, yeah. And he said, what the hell are you doing in here? I said, well, there's an old saying. Everybody's got to be somewhere <laughs> at some time. Here I am. <laughs> and anyway, uh, so I went, I said, I see there's a bar in the back here. I said, I don't want to go to the, the nightclub up front. They had a big nightclub up front, dinner theater and everything. And I just wanted to get a couple beers. So I, he said, yeah, go, go back to the Red Dog Saloon. And it was a working man's bar, so that's where uh, all the guys come in the back after work. You know, they have mud and shit on their boots, and uh, <laughs> their Levi's are torn, their shirts are torn. And anyway, I went back there, ordered a couple beers. Next thing, you know, this is getting late by that time. So uh, next thing I know, here comes this blonde-haired kid again. And uh, I look up from the table. He said, Mr. Pater, you mind if I sit down and have a beer with you? I said, no, go ahead. And that was Ric Flair. That, that's when I found out his name. And uh, I said, yeah. I said, how long have you worked here? He said, about a year. I said, do you like it? He says, yeah, it's a great place to work. And uh, so anyway, uh, uh, we got to know each other, you know, we got drunk <laughs> <laughs> in the Red Dog Saloon. <laughs> nice. And so I told him that I was staying with my brother, Jack. Uh, Jack was defensive line coach for the Minnesota Vikings at the time. And uh, that I was, uh, I come back, uh, to uh, train for the Olympic Games. Now, this is like 1969 or 1970. 1970, I believe it was. And so Rick, Rick and I, uh, uh, he gave me his phone number. I gave him my my brother's phone number. We wound up uh, getting together and uh, uh, going down uh, uh, to a couple gyms. He, yeah, him being from Minnesota, he knew where all the gyms were. But they were all bodybuilding gyms and, you know, health spas and stuff. I said, I said, uh, Rick, I need a, a real gym, you know, where I can lift big weights. And he says, well, there's none of those, but there's a guy that lives over in North Minneapolis. His name is... Uh, Mel Hennessy. At that time, Mel Hennessy had the world record in the bench press in the 242 pound class. And so we went over there. I started talking to Mel. And uh, he says, Yeah, you can train here. It was a, 
his gym was a converted double car garage. He had it insulated with uh, cardboard. And uh, because uh, if anybody's been in uh, Minnesota during the winter, they'll realize that it gets cold. And he had a heater in there, a heat crank. That thing would be 80 degrees in that uh, two-car garage. But it was plenty big enough for power lifting, and Olympic lifting. And uh, so, yeah, it was a good place to train. Yeah, beautiful. And then Rick would come over and uh, he had a, a membership at a sports and health club. And he went over there. I used to go over there with him once in a while, you know, jump in the steam room and the whirlpool and stuff. Mm. That's a good looking guy. Yeah. I think that patch says USA has the Olympic emblem, uh, the rings underneath. Love it. Yeah. Do you still have a relationship yeah, I with a Rick? When I was in the... Ken, do you Go still ahead. talk to Ric Flair? Yeah, I just talked to him about a week ago. Can yeah, I ask you a I, question? I, Can I ask you one question? He wrote the he wrote the forward <laughs> to my book. And I want to get back. I want to get back to your Very book nice. right after this question. Very nice. When he lost his son Reed, did you reach out to him? I tried to. I couldn't get through to him. Really? Mm. Yeah, I, I could. Sometimes I called it. Sometimes it takes me uh, a couple of weeks to get a hold of him. Mm. And uh, he likes to text. I don't text, you know, and uh, so it's. It's hard to uh, get any line of communication going, but yeah, I, I do talk to talk to Rick, and uh, he'll call me or I'll call him. Yeah. So uh, the last time he called me, he called me from a gym down in Tampa, Florida, and he was training with a bunch of young guys in their twenties. They didn't believe that he knew me, <laughs> and so he says, "Oh, you want proof? I'll call it." So he calls me, says, Kenny, I'm in a, uh, a gym down here in Tampa. These guys don't believe that I know you. I said, well, I'll put the little pricks on. I'll straighten them out. <laughs> so he put, he put the ring later on, and I talked to him for a couple minutes. I said, yeah, you're talking to the real Ken Patera. And I said, you better be treating that old man Ric Flair uh, right. Otherwise, I'm going to come down there and slap the – swinging full Nelson on all of you. Yeah, so yeah, it, it, it was a great conversation that sure. we had. So, yeah. Ken, one more time, please show the fans your book, where they can get it. Very excited about this book. There you go. Guys, Ken you Patera, can go to the Way Ken, to the World. Way to the World. You can go to the Ken Patera website. And you could go on to Amazon and and order this book. And Ken, like you said, if you order it from the Ken Patera website, you're going to you can personally sign it if someone requests that, correct? Yeah, KenPatera.com. That's all they have to punch in. KenPatera.com and I'll take care of them and uh, they they can find out the prices there and uh uh I accept PayPal, and uh, so everything's above board. My daughter has a couple businesses. Uh, she has a pottery uh, business and a CBD oil business. And uh, she was a chemist in school, so she knows how to make all that CBD products, you know, the pain balms. And all. She, she has a hell of a business. Uh, have you, both have in you used those? And, uh, Ken, you use uh, yeah, CBD? Uh, all the pottery pieces are, uh, uh, you know, she she makes them. And, uh, yeah, she's a go-getter. But uh, she does all the shipping, yeah. Ken, yeah, have you tried CBD products? The CBD products, Ken, have you tried them? The CBD products? Have you tried CBD products? Yeah. I tried them all. You have? They're fantastic. Nice. That pain bomb that she has is fantastic. Cool. Not that I have any pain, 
<laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. 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 But yeah, her products uh, are legit. Yeah. Ken, what can yeah, you tell us is. about Crusher Blackwell? Obviously, you held the uh, AWA tag titles with Crusher Blackwell back in the day. It feels like he doesn't get talked about much nowadays. Can you uh, tell us some memories of him? Yeah, well, Jer Jerry was a country boy, grew up in uh, Cummins, Georgia. I think he was born over uh, by Stone Mountain, Georgia. Now, I'll tell you one fascinating thing about Jerry. He was a real bright guy, brilliant, as a matter of fact. He couldn't read or write. Mm. Can you believe that? He never learned how to read or write. Wow. No, I... You know, he went to school for just a couple of years, and, uh, you know, the family fell on hard times down there in Georgia, and he wound up uh, working his whole life, you know, to help support the family. But, uh, yeah, John, he was a hell of a performer. And, uh, yeah, I loved working with uh, Jerry. He had a good, good mind for the uh, wrestling business. And... Uh, I, I appreciated that. He came up with some fantastic uh, angles for us uh, against uh, uh, Hulk Hogan T and Tito. Uh, uh, what's Tito's last name? Who, Santana? Yeah. That guy. Yeah, Hulk Hogan, Tito Santana, nice. Hulk Hogan, and Ricky Martel. Sure. The High Flyers, Jumping Jimmy Brunzel, and Greg Gagne. Good stuff. We wound up beating them for the tag team titles. And, uh, yeah, so uh, a lot of the finishes uh, Jerry came up with. And uh, we sold out everywhere. I mean, all the way from Green Bay to Denver, from – Minneapolis down to Omaha, Nebraska, to to Milwaukee, Chicago, uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul. Uh, yeah, we're we're a hot item here. <clears throat> and then when Hulk Hogan was here in the AWA, I was uh, this is before Jerry and I teamed up as tag team partners, and I, I wrestled Hogan. I think I wrestled him 20 times a month for like three months. And uh, we were making fantastic money at the time. That's and, a killer uh, matchup. Complete, that is great yeah, matchup. Complete sellout. Oh, yeah. It didn't matter if it was a big town or a, a medium-sized city. We are selling out everywhere. Ken, there's been a lot of stories about Rick Rude and Rick Rude's untimely demise. Uh, have, what did you hear at the time that Rick Rude passed away? Is there anything you could shed any light on? There's so many different uh, ideas on what took Rick Rude. What do you think? Well, I, I, I really don't. I've heard rumors and stuff, but nothing definitive. Uh, I was with uh, Rick uh, in uh, Maryland uh, about six months before he passed away. We were doing a spot show down there. Or no, it was about a year before. And then next thing I know, uh, Rick is in, uh, what, WCW or what? what, what yeah, he jumped. Turner. He had jumped to uh, WCW. Yeah, he jumped over to Turner. Right. The next thing I know is uh, his wife found him dead on the floor. And uh, I, kn I know he was, when we shared that room there uh, for that uh, show in uh, Maryland, he was smoking pot, snorting cocaine, popping pills, you know, do do doing all the stuff that... Uh, Pro wrestlers do, mm. and <laughs> yeah. But I think that was uh, that was rampant uh, right through all the professional sports: basketball, baseball, football, uh, hockey, and uh, you know, even hockey. Wrestling. Even hockey, really? Wayne Gretzky yeah, doing eight hockey. balls. 
I, no, hell yeah, they sit on that bench. And <laughs> They're chopping some ice. Very good. Okay. Yeah, hey, Ken, yeah, Jason, fan, fan <laughs> Jason, Ken, fan Jason Mornings asking out there, did you know bodybuilder Bill Pearl from Portland? Yes, I did. Uh, Bill Pearl wasn't from Portland. He lived in Clam just outside of Klamath Falls, Oregon. He had a horse farm, farm down there. I can't remember where Bill was actually from, but he wound up buying a, 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 a farm down there in Southern Oregon. And you know who else bought a farm down there for horses? No. Steve Reeves. You remember Steve Reeves, Mr. Universe, yes, Mr. America yes, back yes. in the 40s? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was just before Bill Pearl. And I knew them both. And uh, Bill was a real intellectual type of guy. Uh, you know, he'd go out and shovel horse shit. You know, he, he'd give him hay in the front, run around to the back with a shovel and shovel their shit. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Steve, Steve Reeves and Bill Pearl had horse farms down southern Oregon. Did Steve Reeves play and, Hercules? Uh, was he one of the guys who played Hercules, or am I getting him confused with somebody else? Yeah. He did play Hercules. Yeah. That, there we go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Steve Reeves. Sure. Yeah, he was uh, him and Reggie Parks from uh, South Africa. But Steve Steve really made a name uh, by playing uh, uh, Hercules. He made a lot of money. Yeah. And he made uh, several Western movies, too. But he was best known for the Hercules uh, role. A and bodybuilder, uh, you know, Western cowboy in the 1800s? Yeah, that sounds weird. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds a little strange. Well, Ken, we're yeah. almost out of time. I want to thank you again for uh, treating us so well. I consider you a friend. You're an icon. You're an Olympic hero. You're an American hero. I would remind the fans out there, the Ken Patera book is available on Amazon or the Ken Patera webpage, and you could order the Ken Patera book and ask for it to be signed. Ken Patera, Weight of the World. This Yeah, the way they're going to get it signed is if they order it from me, kenpatera.com. Right. right. You got and it. And then I'll sign it for them. Yeah. That sounds great. You I mean, uh, like I said, I'm going to order mine. We've already got fans saying they're going to order theirs. It's a perfect time to get it. It's summertime. Ken Patera's got such yeah. wonderful stories. Not Again, not only was he one of the all-time great professional wrestlers, he was an Olympic hero. He's an American hero. And I can tell you on a personal basis, he's a hell of a great guy. I am a huge fan mm -hmm. of Ken Patera's, and I'm, I'm fortunate enough to call him a friend. Um, Kara, Ken, one last question from me. I read uh -huh. somewhere where you said you don't want to be in the WWE Hall of Fame. Really? There's no well, building. The, yeah, they don't have a building. I'm in the St. Louis Wrestling Hall of Fame. I'm in the United States uh, Weightlifting Hall of Fame. I'm even in the Cleveland High School Hall of Fame. The high school I graduated from. I mean, if McMahon that that Hall of Fame is bogus because it's Vince McMahon uh, is the one that uh, uh, put it all together. So if, if you're on uh, good graces with Vince McMahon, you automatically be in the Hall of Fame. For some somewhere along the line, I call him a motherfucker too many times. <laughs> Go yeah, figure. I think that's why I'm not in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, it's logical. <laughs> you can. I couldn't imagine you calling anyone a motherfucker. That's a shock. No, yeah. not you. Yeah. Come on. Well, you know. Come on. Well, one, one, of my, one of my weaknesses. <laughs> We're going to hit you with something called the Pharaoh's final question. This is where Jimmy Farrow comes over with an unscripted question. Oh, it could be about anything. It could be about your favorite band, your favorite tag team partner, or what underwear you wear. Why would the fuck would I ask him that? I don't know, but go oh, ahead. Fucking f crazy. All right. <laughs> well, let me set the template here first, and you're going to love my question, Mike. You're going to love it. Go ahead. 
I consider Mr. Patera part of football royalty. Football royalty, after all. His brother worked with the Vikings as the coordinator. Wasn't he the head coach of the Seattle Seahawks, if I'm not mistaken here? At the, yeah. You know, wasn't he like the first one? Anyway, anyway. Yeah. Mr. Patera, as a football fan, your personal rooting interests aside, now that the New York Jets have Aaron Rodgers, do we have a shot at finally, because I was one and a half years old in 1969, do we finally have a shot at making the, I'm not going to say it, but you know what game I'm talking about, because I don't want to jinx us. What do you think? Do they have a shot with Aaron Rodgers? I think they'd have a better shot if they brought Joe Namath back. You're mean. You're mean. You're mean. He's mean. You are so mean. Are you serious? We're still going to be waiting? Dude, you can't say that. That's mean. I did ask him, though. He gave me an answer. You know what? He gave me an answer. He did. Ken? Oh, man. I I had time to disagree. And I'm a huge Jet fan. But, yeah, I got to agree. Ken, thank you again. I can't wait to get your book. Uh, uh, Everybody loves you. Thank you so much what you've done for the wrestling industry and this country in itself. Thank you, Ken Patera. Thank you, guys. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Ken. Thank you. We'll see you along the way. Okay, absolutely. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Well. He's in the top five favorite people we've ever had. Oh, I'm sorry. He's in the top five. He just goes right in. Three times. He goes into the Monty and the Farrell Hall of Fame. Where's our building? In studio. Yeah, yeah. On phone. He's great. And now over the internet. Oh, he's great. Can we have him down here again, though? Like in person? I would love to. He's great. I, uh... I consider Ken a friend, um, good well, guy. He's going to get you for those Ganya comments, but that's okay. Well, come on. That he's mean, not. Man. He should. The one thing, well, the one thing I always appreciate not. about appreciate about Ken Patera is his uh, his blatant honesty. <laughs> yeah, he, does. he doesn't sugarcoat it, right? I love what he called Arafat. <laughs> you know, that's what fantastic. I mean. um, that was great. He just he 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 really is a special human being. Yeah, he is. He you know, is. you you mentioned to me before, like I wish you would have watched oh, wrestling when you, I, I do too. You now. just missed it too because you and I got into the wrestling. Well, I got you into the wrestling right after he had said "fuck this" and and left again. Right. You missed such a great heel. He oozed of it factor. He had the heel charisma. What a perfect bad guy he was and he had to build you love mm-hmm. and he had that flair he did he had flair man he was he well, was just great the one thing i will say about great. him uh, oh during God. the uh territory had wizard. the territory thing and got, by the way guys you got that whole uh dark side of the ring starting next week where okay. you have adrian adonis wow where the uh his daughter angie reached mm-hmm. out to us again i'm going to yep. keep reiterating well, that that's the truth she said hey thank you yeah. thank you to monty and Farrow, cool. because it's that show that made them attracted right. made them to it it's been other about shows adrian too. sure but that's great i go back to the territories where and again respectfully i won't bring up the mcdonald's thing because you know the, the he's people, talked about it a minute, yeah, but you know. it's not even that dude the, the right. guy lost a couple of years of his life yeah. he went to jail for it's, a couple it was, of years it was total bullshit too but let's not get into right this. but the, bullshit but there was a point oh, where Jesus. ganya in that they were discussing it and ganya was calling him a liar and we asked him about the last interview right. which would have been great to see his face yeah he wanted to rip yeah ganya's and brunzel's face off <laughs> like i was like holy shit yeah, he's gonna he's fucking pretty, lose he's his pretty, shit he's pretty on mad. them yeah yeah what i wouldn't want to get him mad do you me. feel that the penalty was worth the crime there was that was a ridiculous penalty well there was there was rumors that they actually I, beat up the police officers oh really yeah rumors or facts what well, are we talking okay, so about here i want to talk about so facts. let's call it it's I wasn't there. I wasn't so if you there. You hear the stories. It's factual. They beat up the cops. Why they beat up the cops? Perhaps I they don't were, know. Perhaps they were defending themselves from overly aggressive uh, arresting. Could be the case. I don't know. Could be the case. Yeah, I don't know. But do you think the penalty? No. No. To lose that much time and have that much it affect your career and everything? No. It's and, got... and on top of it, right? Can we just get back to the basics? There were two guys. You just closed the doors. There are two guys out there 
the size of parked cars. They're hungry. And I don't think they were being like, open the door, mofo. I would have been like, give them the fucking... Well, all right, hold on. Feed them and then... Wait, let's... You let's can't just serve two more you, people? You work, yeah. right? You're ready to go home. Well, I cannot tell you how many times I opened the door in a comic book store to let somebody in because... And even in five, okay. ten minutes, I cannot so there tell you, go. you so how that's, many times. That's the answer. Because it's the right thing to do. I right. mean, well, you got to... Uh, look, I'm not off to a funeral or a wedding. Right. I mean, what the hell's going on here? Give the guys their food. They're starving. I don't know. I don't. I, I personally would have been John like, yeah, Gallagher sure, stand by. He, beat he, up a, he beat up a car. Pops hard to say it should have been less than two years. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And that's I really think. the important part of it. The yeah. man lost two years yes, of his he life, did. right? Yes, he did. Nah, I'm sorry. There was nobody killed, maimed, or crippled there. What the hell's going on here? Two years? Jesus. He said plus one, I think, was a lady cop. Uh, again, I don't know what sort of tactics we used on these guys. As they were being apprehended and arrested. And that's why, like, you know, when I don't people know. interview Patera. I don't know. That seems to be the go-to question, and I don't never understood it. We ne- The three times we have him in, well, we never we even bother? brought it up, it's, right? Yeah, why bother? It's already been... The, it's, it was a little different when Tony was an eyewitness to what happened with Bruiser. Right. You know what I mean? For right. God's sakes, the, you know, way different. But right. this, that would be, to me, you know, to Ken, it's probably an irritant at this point. What the fuck are you asking me well, about? Well, no, that that, it's more than irritant. Right? <laughs> it's like, hey, I lost away from my family. Absolutely. Away I mean, from to my be kids. Asked, asked it over and You're over again. Fucking That's got to be, yeah. It's a big deal. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, look. He should have just bent the bars and I'm walked not going to say I know him on probably such could've. a personal level, but I've spoken yeah. to him so many times. Yeah. Seems like a great gentleman to He's me. He's cool. He's very cool. He's very straight and upfront. And if you don't like it, change the channel. I'm well, sure he would tell uh, again, you Again, I'm going to remind everybody, Ken Patera, yeah. the weight of the world. I'm ordering mine. I actually um, want to get this book. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to save up and it. stuff. There's a couple of books I love. I right. love Brunzel's book, Matt Lance. That's great. Which we have on our desk here. Yeah, I got here. a copy too. That was, um, that's good. There's actually a non, uh, non-wrestler is- written book, but there's right. Gorp the Grappler. Which uh, we haven't really promoted, but it's it's kind of Listen, a fun book. Listen, not for nothing though, the greatest the greatest book, and I'm sure I'll, I may change my mind after I read Ken's, but right. Bob Backlund's book. Bob Backlund's book is the book greatest is incredible. book I have ever read regarding wrestling. Uh, That's to, just my opinion. I, mean, I could not put that thing down. Guys, we want to thank you for joining us. Next Thursday, we've got D'Lo Brown. Um, it's going to be very interesting. <laughs> <I tried. laughs> it's going to be very interesting because, as we know, I, like I was there at the Coliseum. You were there with Draz. Yeah, I know. Broke Draz's neck. I know you were and there. And you know that I question know. was going to be asked. I know. Right? I know. Um, I know. And, you know. So, so sad. But, uh, you know, again, we're yeah. honored that you all join us every Thursday. We love you guys. We'll see you next Thursday where we have D'Lo Brown. And then the following week... We've mm. got the return mm-hmm. of Johnny Photo. For those who don't know who Johnny Photo Johnny is, Photo. Johnny Photo was in studio. He is was a WWE for photographer. Al- for almost 20 years. For almost 20 years. Right. Yep. Johnny Photo uh, ha- escaped many layoffs from the WWE. Yes. Yeah. Johnny Photo on the last round, which there's probably another round coming this mm-hmm. year, as it always does after mm-hmm. WrestleMania. Um was released. Right. Then I ran into him at Iron Maiden. You did. Johnny certainly Johnny. was destroyed over being released. Oh, I can't even imagine. And angry because his release really wasn't so copacetic. Really? So Johnny had a very really now. beautiful severance package. Okay. And was able to not able to speak for literally two years. Wow. Johnny Photo will be in studio, and the stories you guys are going to hear, mm. you're not going to want to miss it. Ah. I'm going to tell you, hit that like and subscribe. Hit that membership. Hit that alert button, because you do not want to miss <laughs> what Johnny Photo is going to tell you. So you've got Ken Patera, which you just watched. Yep. You've got D'Lo Brown next week. Nice. And again... With us, you don't get those basic questions. So you're going to hear shit out of D'Lo that you never probably heard before. Right. And then you finish it off. With a true insider. Johnny Foda. That saw things that most Marks can only dream about. Right. That was just a regular day at the office for And John. let's not forget, Johnny Foto lived through the yeah. Eddie Guerrero passing. Yes. The Chris Benoit yes. murders. The Attitude the, Era. The Attitude Era. Yeah. Everything. Yep. And all the inside 
Jer- the uh, rise Jer- of John Cena. I love everything. you guys all. This is Mike Monty. This is the Pharaoh. And until then, later. <laughs> <laughs>